Uh, something else. Here's a good topic. Uh, I'm a documentary guy. We've talked about some good documentaries. And I have seen, and now it's kind of the, I don't know, it's it's a little bit of a buzz right now, pretty good one, is this Free Solo documentary. Okay. Have you seen it? I've not seen it yet. Okay. You need to watch it. It's, uh, it's Alex Honnold, and he free solo climbs El Capitan in Yosemite. Uh, and free soloing is climbing this 3,500 rock face, which is just granite, with nothing and nobody. No ropes, no clips, uh, no safety net, no parachute, and no assistance, no help. And he climbs it from beginning to end in less than four hours. And it's just, in my opinion... The greatest single day achievement I can think of. It's crazy because if you don't, like, I'm a good example of this. I don't fully understand what that even means, so I can't understand the greatness of it. And without seeing the documentary, it makes it, it, makes it really hard. But you were, you were talking, and I think it was a scene from the documentary when he was, spoiler alert, I guess, well, um, he's still alive, so everybody should – you can watch the movie and know yeah. that he makes it. Yeah, and when he came up over the edge and there were tourists just kind of <laughs> hanging out there, and they couldn't even – That's a great story. They couldn't even understand what just happened. That's kind of how I feel trying to picture it in my brain. Yeah, well, he yeah he tells a story. And I don't know if it was on Half Dome, which is another uh, rock face there in Yosemite. Um, I don't know if – he climbs Half Dome, he says, uh, on a whim, just with no preparation. He's like, I'm just going to see what it's like. And he got to the top, but he said in particular, to where he's about a third of the way from the top, um, he hits a kind of a part where he's not comfortable, okay? And he's, I'm going to guess, 2,500 feet off the ground with nothing keeping him on this rock except his hands and his feet. And uh, he, he said, I had to sit there for a while. And I was a, he was a little panicky. And he said, I had to stand up on my right foot on basically just a, uh, not even not a ledge, just like an you know, uh, indentation or something. That's he said, crazy. I just couldn't do it. And he goes, and finally, I mean, I had no choice. He said, and I could hear tourists at the top just laughing and, you know, carrying on. They, they couldn't see down where he was. They had no idea he was coming. But he could hear them laughing. Um, and he said, finally, I just, I did it. I just trusted it. And I stood up and I go to the top. And he said, most of the time when, when climbers will reach the summit, they come over the top with clips and a belt and ropes around their neck and stuff. And people always come up to them and they're like, oh, my God, that's awesome. That's just so hardcore, man. That's awesome. And he said, I come up in just a T-shirt and some shorts. And I just walk away. And they're looking at me like, what would you do, dummy? Did you fall over or something? Did, or he, they just thought he was a hiker. They couldn't even comprehend they could, that he came They didn't even out. conceive the fact that he just climbed up like that. And then the funny part is he started to go down the trail out of the back. <laughs> and uh, took his tight shoes off. He, I guess he uses just really tight shoes, climbing shoes. He goes, I took those off, and I'm walking down the trail, and people are stopping going, oh, my God, you're hiking barefoot? That is that's, badass. That's so hardcore. <laughs> he said it was just kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the El Cap thing is just – I've always thought the greatest athletic achievement that I could think of in a single day – I'd love to hear you guys, or you guys if you have an opinion – uh, the, that you could have would be to win the Indy 500 and the NASCAR race in the same day. Okay. okay. Now I'm talking about a single day event. So, you know, you guys did, we're going to throw Jim Thorpe or Jesse Owens and stuff happened over the course of several days okay. during the Olympics. I get that. I can't think of a single day achievement greater than what I saw this kid do on, on climbing El Capitan by himself with no ropes. It, it, it's that amazing. Well, I need to watch a documentary, obviously. Yeah, you do. And I'm having a hard time arguing with you because nothing is immediately jumping out to me. Did you guys um, think of anything? There's not too many things that you can do two times in a day. Like, well, games one day and that's it. Right. I agree. Yeah, I, I don't I got nothing. Okay, so here, let, let's bring this kind of full circle. These p- people that are listening are like, yeah, well, what's that have to do with this? So what's the hunting achievement? What's the What's the equivalent – in the hunting industry realm, not industry, of of what he what he's done. What's the single greatest day in hunting look like? God. And and I here's what I've thought of. It's it's person specific. It has to be. It has to be. Yeah. You know, uh, but it also has to have some elements of what he's done. So is his life was you know is it worth risking your life? I, no. So I don't think you have to risk your life literally 
to the extent he did. But there to, are guys that this. do that out west in the mountains, and uh, you know they get a goat tag, and that stuff is not a walk in the park. Well, I think that's where we're headed. I think that's what kind of for me personally, and and you know again, do you take it into to to what you find impressive because it's all about yourself? And he would say the same thing. He was like, "This is just what he wanted to do." Right. And then when he talked about Half Dome, I didn't finish my story, but when he talked about Half Dome, he said when he got done, he said, I had no feeling of of achievement at all. He had failed. He said, because I got scared, I did not experience mastery that day. Yeah. And that's what I wanted. So then he set out to do El Cap, and it took him you know, a couple of years and a full year of preparation of memorizing literally. He could yeah. walk you through each thumb hold every Every single movement he made for 3,500 feet, he can walk you through that. Um, so, yeah, that's that was his personal quest. So what would a personal quest look like for hunting? For me, it's got to have some real pain slash suffering to get to it. Um, so a, a, some, a goat hunt, a, a ram, some sort of a doll sheep up, up in the mountains that would require three or four days to get there packing in your food, your tent, um, and then being successful. I don't think the weapon matters to me, um, but that's probably the equivalent in my eyes of that kind of an achievement. I, I would almost feel like, okay, did it. I mean, I don't know what else I could do. Grizzly bears come to mind because of the danger thing. Um, I, I'm kind of infatuated with grizzly bears. I feel like the – I have no – I've, I just don't want to kill one. I, the, I just don't. I don't The danger lie, thing but. to me seems like it would it would uh, have more weight to it than just the hardship of the hunt itself. Just because, you know, people do uh, – Cam Haynes comes to mind. People love Cam Haynes. People hate Cam Haynes for some reason. But you cannot ignore the fact the guy is a freak athlete and his work ethic is insane. Anyone who runs 200 miles at a time – yeah, That's insane. Yeah, it's tough. So, you know, those things you can train your body for. And some people, like myself included, choose not to have a level of physical exertion <laughs> that high. But guys like Cam Haynes, and there's a whole subset of hunters and backwoods guys that, backcountry guys that want to do that. And it takes a long time, but you can train your body to get used to those things on some level and accomplish those things. A, a wild grizzly bear is, is you can't, you you can't train for that. That level of danger is it's just it's apparent in Mother Nature, and it's either going to be there or it's not. So that kind of wild card factor to me is more is more appealing. So the danger, yeah. So what what's dangerous about being around a grizzly bear? Um, and I, I don't have a I being around. That's what I want to do. I just want to be in the presence yeah. of a grizzly bear. So I'm guessing a hundred yards. Most experts, I'm not, would say yeah, I don't that's. Know. Dude, that's legit. If oh, they can cover a hundred yards. yards. They're right, and so I really would just—I I would love to take pictures of a grizzly bear. I don't—I yeah. have no desire to shoot one. I, I again don't. I'm good with anybody else that wants to. I can agree with that though, obviously. because be just putting yourself in that scenario. What whatever the goal is, whether it's just to take pictures, whether it's to actually kill it as a trophy, whatever you want to do, to me is irrelevant. Just being in that dangerous scenario and experiencing that, and basically coming out of it alive. It yeah. would give me more of a rush than just, you know, kicking my ass over seven seven days hiking and getting somewhere really hard. I don't know. That's just kind of how I – Yeah, I guess I like the suffer part. I like the grueling part of it. I, well, I don't like it. It appeals to me, you know, so – 